Hello everybody. In today's video we are going to be talking all about hash once again. So over the past few months I've been making quite a bit of hash and uh, needless to say have a nice little collection of it going and I've come to grow quite a bit of a love for hash over these past few months because you know I've used it the most that I ever have in my whole time of smoking cannabis and uh, made more than I ever have in the whole time I've been smoking cannabis. And uh, just the whole process behind extracting it and the potency of the high that it gives you has really, you know, it's gained a place in my heart. And I want to take some time today to talk about it. Now, I've made videos before on hash, you know, how ice water hash is made, some of the history behind hash and its origins of use and stuff, but I just want to kind of go over it again, you know, in a sort of, you know, revised and summed up fashion. So, if you don't know what hash is, uh, it's a type of cannabis extract, and it's made out of the resin of the cannabis plant. Now, I'm going to get into all that stuff, the you know, what the resin is and how it's extracted from the plant, but I assume that if you're watching this video, you're familiar with cannabis and may even smoke it yourself and when you have your flowers and you're looking at them and you're breaking it up and your fingers start to get all sticky or the smell in the room starts to get really potent um, what you're smelling is and what you're smelling and what's making your fingers sticky is the bursting of what are called trichomes this is another that's the more scientific term for what you call cannabis resin now, if you look all over your nugs, there's all these, you know, some some strains ha have higher concentrations that, than others, but there's all these little crystals, there's all these little white, shiny things all over it, and uh, some, some may be dry and brittle and a kind of brownish color, others might be clear and, and reflecting light, while others are cloudy and look more like a milky white color, but all those crystals you see over your that are lining your nugget and sometimes people have grinders with a screen in it that collects what they call keef down in the bottom all the, all that powder down there those are trichomes that is cannabis resin that has fallen off of the plant now you only usually will get keef from cannabis strains that are very dry or have been dried out extensively and the trichomes themselves have become brittle and dry because trichomes possess an oil-like ability well not a, not ability but characteristic um, they act as they act as a sort of UV reflectant on the plant and what it will do is there's the trichomes themselves are shaped like this like a mushroom and the head of the, the trichome is reflective and bounces light back out of it. So on a really sunny and intense day, cannabis that is heavily laden with trichomes will be less likely to get burnt or sun damaged. Another thing is, an, is trichomes are a natural pesticide. Um, not only the chemicals that they produce, being the terpenes and cannabinoids that you know, upon tasting it to an insect, it's bitter, it's sour, it's, you know, unattractive. But, like I said, these trichomes have an oily characteristic, and this is what makes cannabis sticky, is these trichomes. And bugs can easily get stuck all up in the trichomes of a cannabis plant, not being able to further damage it. <coughs> Now, when cannabis is harvested, cured, and dried, uh, some strains, the resin that's all over the flowers, will dry out and become brittle. Like, if you're playing with your weed and looking at it in the sun and touching it, you may see dust flying off of your nug. Those are trichomes, most likely the heads of the trichomes. And they, they're very light, so they look like dust, and they'll just be floating off of your off of your flower down onto the ground like I said a moment ago if you have one of the grinders that has a built-in 
screen in it. If you've been grinding up a lot of dry cannabis, you're most likely to have a nice little collection of powder or keef down there. Now, those are a high a high concentration of trichomes, but there's a lot of really, you know, incinerated and broke down plant material in that as well. Now, before I get into hash, you could say that keef is a form of hash, you know what I mean? Or looking at all the trichomes on your cannabis flower are the hash of the flower. But it's not very concentrated, it's not very isolated yet. And that's what I want to talk about a little bit is some of the artistic methods in extracting hash from the plant. Now, hash has been around for a very long time, you know, centuries, and I wouldn't go as far as to say they've been using hash before they were smoking the flower itself, but it's around that time that hash started showing up. It's a very old uh, thing. It's a very old technique. And all different parts of the world have all different um, origins and... um, popularities of hash use i mean in our culture it's not it's not very much so a popular thing i mean unless you look at it through the lens of the rising cannabis industry with the companies that are making you know ice water hash and hash rosin and all this different stuff but in terms of like traditional indigenous use of hashish Places like uh, Morocco, Colombia, uh, Nepal, China, Jamaica, Afghanistan, a lot, a lot of Asia is heavily is traditionalized in using hash. In Afghanistan and maybe even just Asia in general, it's known as hashish or sometimes charis, and. Uh, they have all sorts of different ways that they make the stuff. The stuff that I just mentioned, mentioned charis, in places like Jamaica and Morocco and Nepal. Um, the way that they make their hash, this is, this is pretty epic. So they have their big cannabis buds. They have all the plants and the big chunky colas. They'll go around and they'll take their hands and rub the plant like this rub the flower in between their hands for a very long period of time. And what they're doing is they're smearing all those trichomes, bursting all those trichomes off of the plant onto their hands. And, you know, if you if you do this for 10, 20, 30 minutes, when you look at your hands, your hands are covered in this black paste. That black paste is hash, or what they call charis. They scrape it off with a knife and smoke it. <clears throat> now I've never I've never made hash that way but you could do a test right now you know I mean if you got enough flour but you know take a little nugget and just smush smush it in between your hands just rub it in between your hands until it's completely incinerated and you'll have this residue on your fingers and that is the accumulated trichomes that have stuck to your finger and sort of like melted off of the flour itself Um, Another way that hashish is made in places like um, Africa and um, Asia, I don't know the technical name for this, I I mean, we call it dry sift, but I don't know what they call it, but it's this really interesting thing they do, Uh, they they take a bunch of cannabis plants, dry them out, And then they smack the stalks on the ground, and it beats off all the buds, gets all the buds beaten off so they don't have to, you know, hand trim it. They take all the buds, and they put put them in this huge bin, this huge bin, like big metal, metal basin. And at the bottom of the basin is this fine, fine mesh screen. Once the basin is full of their flower material, they wrap a piece of plastic tightly over the top of it and seal it down over the the flower and then they take sticks 
and they beat the top of the plastic, hitting the flower under it. They beat the top of that over and over and over again for hours. And when they're done, they take the <coughs> the under under that mesh screen, there's a little tray that can be pulled out. And they pull that tray out, and what's in it is a massive pile of beautiful, beautiful blonde powder. And what this powder is, is pure trichomes. They're using the art of the brittle nature of trichomes from dried cannabis, and agitation, like abrupt rough beating and agitating of the material and what it does is they're hitting this material with the sticks and all the trichomes are getting knocked off of the cannabis down through the plant material and through that screen and the plant material can't pass through that fine screen so all you get in the bottom is that beautiful golden sifted hash Um, in our culture, the most popular way that hash is made is through what's called bubble hash or ice water hash. Now, ice water hash is really just what it sounds like. You, you take your cannabis and you put it in a big barrel of ice and water and then you let it get really cold and what this does is this freezes the trichomes, forcing them to become brittle. This freezes the trichomes. Uh, and like I was saying earlier about how some strains have more oily trichomes than dry trichomes, that's why it'll get sticky. Um, submerging cannabis material in ice water will freeze these oily trichomes solid. And trichomes themselves are an oil base, so they don't mix with water. Once, all, once you have all your material mixed into the ice and water and it's cooled down significantly, you take a paddle or some sort of, you know, some people use a drill and some sort of agitating tool and you beat around at the big concoction. You beat it around, agitate it, stir it up, swish it around. And what this does is using the same science that people in Asia do to knock the trichomes off the plant, um... What that does when you beat up that material is it breaks off those frozen trichomes from the plant material. And because it's an oil base, it doesn't dissolve into the water. It, it remains suspended in the water. After you've thoroughly beaten up the plant material, you pour the material through what's known as bubble bags or micron bags. And these are, these are kind of akin to the basin that they use in Asia with the screen in the bottom. I have a set myself, that's how I've been making my hash recently. But they're just these bags that can usually go in like a five gallon bucket or sometimes like a barrel or something. And they have screens down at the bottom of them. And, you know, one bubble bag set usually comes with eight bags and the first bag is known as the material bag with the biggest sized holes for its screen and the last bag is the uh, tiniest sized screen and what you do is you beat it up and you get you get all this all the trichomes out suspended in the water and then you pour that mix through all those bubble bags the first bag will grab all the plant material and ice you can pull that out and discard of it and as you as you begin to pull these bags the trichomes themselves are different sizes and that is that is ha how bubble hash utilizes collecting the hash the the art of making bubble hash because these screens progressively get smaller and trichome heads are generally 73 to 90 microns big those are two of the bags in the bubble bag set. And they usually have the best product in them. Now that's because most of what you're going to be getting in those bags is pure trichome heads. Anything 
be before and beyond that, you're getting more into the ranges of broken trichome heads and the necks of the trichomes themselves. You can think of the trichome as like two pieces, the head and the neck. What you want is the head because this has the most cannabinoid and terpene content and will actually uh, create a boiling or melting or vaporizing effect when you smoke it rather than a charring or burning effect when you smoke it. Um, hashes that are consistent of mostly trichome heads are said to be higher quality, they are sold for more money, they taste better, they smell better, and they typically get you higher. So there's all these there's all these different ways that bubble hash is made. And basically what you're trying to do is get those trichomes away from the plant. Get, the, get that keef, get those diamonds, those crystals, those triclones, whatever you, you call them. I've heard that before. Uh, get that away from the plant and isolate it in its own form. And when you get that, you have hash. Now, hash can come in tons of different colors and consistencies and qualities. Um, part of what's nice about making bubble hash is that you can kind of gauge the quality and consistency of hash that you're getting by the different micron bags that you're pulling it from you know okay so that piles the 73 micron that piles the 90 micron you know it goes all the way down from 220 to 25 microns you know and you'll usually get hash in every single one of the bags i mean obviously not the material bag but you'll usually have at least some sort of product in every single bag. But, you know, there's a certain few bags in there that give off the best, most banging product. And uh, that, that brings me into wanting to talk a little bit about the consistency of hash. Is that, uh, you know, if you've ever acquired hash, I'd assume, I mean, unless you bought it from some into some dispensary, I'd assume it was in the form of like a hard chunk of something. And you had to either heat it up and like and like pull it apart or uh, take a knife and break pieces off of it. So that is most likely low quality hash. That is mo that is what you could call low quality hash because um, What's going on is there's a lot of there's a lot of plant material cons like mixed into that and there's a lot of chlorophyll and there's a lot of you know those little orange hairs there's all sorts of stuff through the hash itself that is so broken down it changes the consistency of it and when you get that really hard brick you know non-malleable it doesn't smell it's not soft it's not sticky uh, you usually have a mix of really dry and beaten up trichomes and plant material and there's not a lot of I mean it will get you high but there's not a lot of conservation of terpene content by the way terpenes are what are responsible for the smell and taste of the flour and hash when you smoke it. It's also what makes it sticky. So if you have bought hash from an, a dispensary before, you most likely got something that looked like a little layer of resin a little lay like if you've ever heard of dabs could have looked like that it could have looked like a little layer of oil or or a or a pile of blonde powder like crumbly just you know powder the difference from that compared to black hard brick hash is that the blonde, fluffy, crumbly, resinous hash is almost 
consistent entirely of pure trichomes. There's no plant material, there's no orange hairs, there's no leaf tips, there's no little baby seed pods and, you know, any of that stuff. There's no plant material. All that's in there is pure trichomes. Sometimes even pure heads of trichomes. Um, I follow certain profiles on Instagram that post cannabis macro photography. And my God, when you look at a picture of a you know a little dabber with a with a scoop of high quality hash when you look at that under a macro lens all you see is millions of trichome heads all all stuck together now if you're lucky enough to get something like that you have what's known as full melt hash or five star hash this hash will get you the highest because it's most concentrated in what gets you high in the first place but it will also like i said earlier it will melt when you smoke it it will melt when you smoke it rather than light on fire and this is why it's called full melt is because the the range of quality of hash is kind of rated not only by the consistency but by how it burns you know I say burn, but good stuff vaporizes. Good hash will vaporize. And to the point where you could dab it, if you know what dabbing is. You could take really nice five-star full melt bubble hash, or any sort of hash, and you'd be able to fully heat up a banger and dab it. Now, one-star hash is that hard brick stuff I was talking about. And that stuff, you put a light to it, it doesn't even bubble. It doesn't even boil or do anything it immediately will char and light on fire now the reason we call it bubble hash is because as you get up there in quality as when you put when you apply heat to it it will boil it will boil and bubble and melt you know and something like two or three star hash you put a light to it and it and it will boil for a minute and then catch on fire but as you start nearing four and five and maybe even six star hash, which I have heard of, all it does is melt and bubble and boil and turn into a liquid. And it will do that until it's completely gone and vaporized. Uh, and that stuff's pretty pretty good. It will pack the most flavor. It will pack the most punch compared to, you know, just a kind of... Just throwing it together type hash, you know, just, I assume a lot of that stuff, brick hash, came out when we were first getting into making hash in our culture, and now we're really honing in on, you know, what's going on and what needs to be done in order to get just the trichomes. So, I've kind of gone over what I wanted to, um... I mean, I do want to mention, uh, I follow this guy on Instagram, he lives in Afghanistan, and he's literally just like a hash page, he posts videos of how they do stuff over in Afghanistan, and, you know, that's where I learned a lot of those different methods of extracting the hash, is from that profile. Just readjusting. But, um... No, he posts these videos every now and then of just, uh, you know, it's a circle of people and they're just sitting there hitting off this, like, water pipe thing, friggin' tons of smoke pouring out, coughing their brains out. And it makes you wonder, like, what other people make of hash and what they, you know, how they think it feels like and stuff like that and religious aspects that are tied to it. You know, and uh, that Charis thing, that's always kind of fascinated me too. I've seen some wild pictures of that stuff. People with like a half inch layer of just black goo stuck to their hands. You know what I mean? And uh, another thing that that Afghanistan Instagram hash account posts is... uh, 
they'll do the, they'll do they'll do these little melt tests where well, they'll they'll take a big piece of hash and they'll put a lighter to it. And that shit is just dripping. It's just dripping and boiling and melting. And I'm over here thinking, you know, oh my god, why are you doing that? You're wasting it. Just smoke it. But it is very satisfying. It is a flex for sure to show that your hash can melt like a liquid and drip all over the place. Uh, but yeah, this whole world of hash is pretty interesting. Um, if you're into the dabbing world, you know, concentrates, rosins, extracts, diamonds, batters, and all that stuff, um, you're into hashes as well. You're into con- concentrates because what what solvent concentrates are is dissolved trichomes hash is like isolated trichomes you can yeah you can think of hash as like isolated trichomes while dabs are dissolved trichomes you know because you use the water to carry over the hash when you're making bubble hash but if you use something like butane or um what's it called CO2 or all these different solvents that they use, um, what it does is, is it dissolves the trichomes because it's a nonpolar solvent and it dissolves those oilless trichomes into the solvent itself. Then you separate that solvent and evaporate or, and purge it away, and what you're left with is a layer of dissolved trichomes. And that's what makes up the uh, concentrate products. In those concentrates, you have all the assortments of what comes in the trichomes, which is why it's so good. But I just wanted to throw that in there that if you're, you know, if you like dabbing, you'd probably like bubble hash too because it's a step closer to the plant, which I like about it, but it's just as strong as some extracts and concentrates that I've tried in my life. So that's really it for this video. I just wanted to put in another two cents on hash and the art of hashish and the world of hash and what people make of it. So with that said, thank you all for watching and I will be back with more.